Hey guys, today I want to talk about one of my favorite tech companies, uh, a company that I've admired for a long time. Uh, I've used many of their products, I've always found them very unique and fascinating, and I don't think that they get enough credit from people, uh, especially in the modern days, uh, for being, you know, just for being an innovative tech company throughout their history. And that company is Sony. So I'm sure everyone's familiar with Sony. They're a very well-known company, one of the biggest Japanese companies in the world. They've been around for a long time. They had their hand in a lot of different industries. But I don't think that people realize just how innovative they are. And today I want to give you guys a brief rundown of Sony's history and show you guys exactly why they're so innovative. So when people think of innovative tech companies, probably you might think of Apple, right, with the Steve Jobs era especially. Maybe you might even think of Samsung. Um, but I don't think most people uh, these days, I don't think many people these days think of Sony when they think of a uh, really innovative tech company. When people think of Sony these days, they probably think of the PlayStation and maybe some of their cameras and audio products, but that's pretty much it. I don't think people really think of Sony as this really super influential tech company, which really they should be thought of. Uh, so I'm going to run down the history of Sony and really just talk about how innovative they are. Because I don't think people really realize just how many things that Sony have innovated, released to the market, introduced to the world, and uh, invented. All right. So Sony was founded in 1946, right after World War II. In 1955, Sony introduced the TR55, Japan's first transistor radio. So this is really Sony's first popular electronic product. Uh, the popular TR63, which is a uh, successor to the TR55, opened up the gateway for portable radios and changed the way how people listen to music. So this became very, very popular in America and uh, kind of spurred the popularity of portable transistor radios in the US. And it's something that Sony would do once again decades later with the Walkman. In 1960, Sony introduced the first portable non-projection TV, the Sony TV8301. In 1961, Sony introduced the first compact videotape recorder, the PV100. In 1968, Sony developed the Trinitron TV. It had a superior design, the single gun 3 cathode picture tube, and the vertically aligned aperture grille, which made it reign supreme as one of the best color vision which made it reign supreme as one of the best color televisions on the market for over 20 years. So, this basically made Sony the largest TV producer in the world up until the 1990s. In 1969, Sony introduced the TC-50, a compact cassette recorder that NASA equipped every astronaut with from Apollo 7 onwards. In 1971, Sony introduced the VP-1100, the world's first video cassette recorder. In 1975, Sony introduced Betamax, a new video format that would eventually fail but was innovative for the time. In 1979, Sony introduced the Walkman, the first portable cassette player which would again change people's music listening habits forever. In 1980, Sony introduced the XC1, the world's first color video camera. Also in 1980, Sony introduced SPDIF, SPDIF, and digital audio interface co-developed with Philips, which, by the way, if you're curious, the S stands for Sony and the P stands for Philips. In 1981, Sony introduced the compact disc, the CD, which is co-developed with Philips, and they also introduced the first CD player, the Sony CDP-101. Also in 1981, Sony developed the 3.5-inch floppy disc, which I bet many people didn't know about this, the 3.5 inch floppy disk was introduced by Sony and it would become a standard for the next 20 years. In 1991, Sony jointly introduced the lithium ion battery jointly with Asai Kase. And the lithium ion battery is now virtually ubiquitous amongst devices with rechargeable batteries. In 1993, Sony introduced Sony Dynamic Digital Sound, SDDS, which was a competitor to Dolby as a surround sound format. In 1994, Sony introduced the PlayStation. Although there have been previous video game consoles that use CDs to load games, the Sega CD and TurboGrafx CD for example, the PlayStation was the first successful CD-based console, and from then on, every console used disc-based formats to load games. In 1996, Sony introduced the Vio brand for their computers, with, with a line of laptops which, among other innovations, introduced the first LED backlit displays, which became standard on all laptops after that, chiclet-style keyboards way before Apple and others did it, and is now pretty much a standard for laptops as well, thin and light designs years before the MacBook Air, and switchable graphics now standard on entry-level gaming laptops. In 1998, Sony introduced the Memory Stick, their own proprietary storage format, a year before the SD card came out. In 1999, Sony introduced the Super Audio CD, the SACD, co-developed with Philips again, a format that is kind of niche, but still in use today, mostly by audiophiles for the improved sound quality compared to regular CDs. In 1999, 
Sony introduced Ibo, the world's first consumer robot companion, and they still make a more modern version today. In 2000, Sony introduced the PlayStation 2, the best-selling video game console of all time, and most people's first DVD player. In 2001, Sony's phone division merged with Ericsson to form Sony Ericsson, whose mobile phones would steadily introduce technologies that were ahead of their time, like having dedicated media playback controls and upping the resolution of their cameras high enough to actually rival point-and-shoot cameras of the time. In 2002, Sony introduced the Blu-ray format, a format that beat HD DVD to become the standard high-definition physical disc format and still in use today. In 2007, Sony introduced the world's first consumer OLED TV, the XCL1. In 2008, Sony introduced the Xperia, a line of smartphones that amongst its innovations introduced the first water-resistant phones, which is now standard on most phones, and the first 4K OLED displays on a phone, and the first 21:9 cinema aspect ratio phones. Currently, the Xperia 1 is still the only phone on the market with these features. In 2009, Sony introduced the PSP Go, the first gaming handheld to use exclusively digital games, which was way ahead of its time. In 2011, Sony introduced the HMZ T1, the first truly immersive head-mounted display, its designs are still being used today by smaller companies in the HMD niche. In 2011, Sony introduced the Tablet P, the first Android device to use dual displays. This was nine years before the Microsoft Surface Duo. In 2012, Sony introduced the PS Vita, the first gaming handheld with an OLED display. In 2013, Sony introduced triluminous technology on their TVs, which marked the first time QLED TVs actually appeared on the market. This was years before Samsung would make QLED technology more famous on their TVs. In 2016, Sony introduced the HDR AS300, the first action camera with optical image stabilization. Its competitors like GoPro were still using electronic image stabilization at the time. In 2017, Sony introduced the Xperia Touch, the first portable projector that projected a touch surface. Now imagine if Apple made technology like this. Instead, it's barely a footnote for Sony. Other Sony inventions include proprietary formats that they created, like the UMD format, the PS Vita memory format, the mini disc format, the Memory Stick Pro Duo, the 4.4 Pentacom bounce connector, which has become a standard among digital audio players, the LDAC HD Bluetooth codec, which has now become a standard among Android players, custom camera lenses co-developed with Carl Zeiss for their mirrorless cameras as well. Sony is also known for popularizing mirrorless cameras in the Sony Alpha series, basically forcing Canon and Nikon to keep up. Being a big name in the production industry with the Sony Vegas production software and their pro cameras like the HTC 5500 that competes with other pro brands like Ari and Red, used in Hollywood films. Sony's audio technology is as respected as any other high-end hi-fi maker. Devices like the WM1Z DAP digital audio player and the Z1R headphones and IEMs, the SAZ1 near-field powered speakers, and the HTA9 360-degree spatial mapping speakers, the SRSWS1 wearable speaker, the LSPX S2 glass sound speaker, a 1000 XM4 noise-canceling headphones, which by the way finally challenged Bose's dominance of the noise-canceling headphone market, and the wireless earbuds, basically all show Sony's expertise in the audio field, from the affordable end all the way up to the very high end. And just recently, Sony also announced an electric car concept to compete with Tesla. Seriously, how cool of a company is this? So guys, I hope that enlightened you guys a bit more on Sony's innovative history and just showed you guys how many things that Sony introduced to the market, just how much innovation Sony has had in its history. And I hope you guys have come away from this video with a deeper respect for Sony, one of the most innovative companies in tech history. And it's just kind of a shame that Sony doesn't really do much marketing of this. Unlike Apple and, and maybe Samsung, Sony does not market that well. And unfortunately, that's why consumers these days, they just think that Sony's all about just the PlayStation and, uh, and maybe some audio and camera stuff and that's it. But really, there's so much more than that. And their history basically proves this. Apple. So I hope you guys have uh, learned something from this video. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And that's it. Thanks for watching.